This week, we saw Linux market share on the rise, and we'll dig into the numbers. Plus, two excellent free and open source games had rather large updates, and we'll talk about them. And Bazai's July update brings massive changes. All of this and more today. That's right, it's Steam Deck and Linux Gaming News Time on a Tuesday. Linux market share is growing at a much faster clip these days as Windows is on the decline, and this week Stats Counter updated their stats for desktop operating systems, and it's wild. Linux grew by more than half a percent month over month. We're now at 5.03% in the US, and uh, that's pretty amazing. That's an all time high for us. If we hide Mac OS and Unknown and Mac OS and other, so you can see that Windows is on the decline here and Linux is on the rise. And if we also uh, recognize the fact that Chrome OS is also based on Linux, that's over 7% of uh, market share. And if we factor in unknown here, we don't know what that is, but much of that could be Linux. So <laughs> that's pretty fun. So what actually caused the jump? Well, it's no secret that Windows 11 is a disaster and Microsoft is killing off Windows 10 support soon. So, so it's fair to say that some of the growth we've seen in the Linux world is coming from Windows 10 refugees. But let's also not forget that Steam Deck is a Linux device and it has sold millions upon millions of units at this point. Let's also remember that the Dutch, German and French governments are working together towards securing their digital sovereignty by switching municipal systems over to Linux and other FOSS software. Not only will that mean more desktops, laptops, and workstations running Linux, but it will also mean that more money will be going towards the development of desktop Linux and the free software that these governments and municipalities rely on. And that is a good thing for literally everyone. But it's not all smooth sailing for us Linux folks, as yes, Windows is dying, but Windows 11 actually grew by 1.5% on the Steam hardware survey, meaning that Windows 11 is now the top dog on the hardware survey. Um, and this is the first time that Windows 11 has taken the top spot on the hardware survey. Meanwhile, Linux shrunk by 0.12% uh, for June. However, you know, with overall growth continuing and these numbers being relative to each other and not absolute, it doesn't change the fact that Linux is continuing to grow, despite the fact that these percentage changes uh, fluctuate and look like they're going or trending negative here. So what this tells me is that there is a lot of people who hate the idea of Windows 11, but they're going to it anyway. Time will tell, but I can tell you this, us Linux users, we're on the right side of history here. I want to thank everybody who watches or listens to my podcast. It's called Off the Console. It's hosted by High Tech Low Life, James from Games Revealed, and myself. Uh, we're doing a weekly podcast. It's a video and audio format. You can find a link to it down in the description. Uh, and this week, we actually had Ross from Accursed Farms on the show. Uh, we went in depth about like not just the theory, but the practical implications of Stop Killing Games. And uh, it was very enlightening and super fun. Uh, we're very grateful for Ross coming on the show. Uh, and we've got some big people coming on the show soon, too. So make sure you head over to the YouTube channel and get subscribed. Uh, we're trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. And I think with your guys' help, we can do it. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun over there. And uh, we're talking about all kinds of cool and nerdy stuff, which you know, if you're watching this show, you're gonna like the stuff we're talking about over there. And we've done like 30 something episodes so far. So uh, I think I think we're gonna be able to hit a thousand subscribers pretty soon. Uh, you can use the link here to, to follow that. All right, there is a new build of OpenRCT2 to grace us with a new free and open source re-implementation of Rollercoaster Tycoon 2. It's version number 0.4.24, codenamed Encyclopedia Salesman. <laughs> And this is jam packed with new features, improvements and fixes. So let's review the details here. First up, vanilla scenarios now have previews in the scenario selection window. They've removed the limit of 2000 animated titles per map, and they've added 10 new translations to the Windows installer. And there's a ton of other details here. They have a new update video as well, which I always find quite interesting to check out. And you can check out the release notes with the link in the description. And just so you know, most of the uh, stories I'm talking about here, I'm actually covering over on the blog. Uh, I'm trying to cover them in real time. 
If you guys see anything that you want me to cover, uh, news that you think I should write about or talk about in the video, you can let me know. Uh, there are ways to contact me down in the description. So three years of development have led to a brand new release of OpenMW. For those not familiar, OpenMW is a free and open source re-implementation of Bethesda's classic, The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. This release improves AI and pathfinding, animations, configuration in VFS, save game formats, and gameplay improvements. This new version includes updates to the AI actors in the game with new spell logic, optimized pathfinding, and improved behavior including taunting, combat, and more. As they described in their post, we taught creatures to drink potions, introduced laws against lycanthropy and vampirism, and told Snowy Granius that his skeleton buddy misses him a lot. They added a new super flexible animation interpolation state machine that helps smooth out the transition between two distinct animations. Before this update, the animations would just kind of jump between discrete keyframes, resulting in jarring cuts. This update has also changed which save game formats are compatible with this project. Any save game from version 0.45 or below will be rejected by the loader. This is in an effort to streamline the code and polish the save and loading feature. There are also some significant gameplay changes here, all in an effort to bring OpenMW closer to the original Morrowind experience. The first big focus is how melee combat works. Quote, trying to get the melee combat right was a focus of this release, and we replaced the physics-based hits of the previous releases with Morrowind's more simple scanning of the player's surroundings based on a hit cone defined by the game settings. It comes with replicating some quirks, such as NPCs being unable to look up or down to attack, or collision box offsets relative to the actor position not being used. The graphics pipeline continues getting improvements as well. Uh, they've added occlusion of rain and snow, meaning that it will no longer precipitate through ceilings. They've improved lighting in many subtle ways that should minimize pop-in and look more like the original game, and provide better specular effects for point lighting. And there's a ton more here too. This post is several pages long with details about the update and things that I just don't have time to touch on in this video. Uh, to check it out, there's going to be a link down below. Uh, and give this game a spin if you're so inclined. And if you want to try any of the games that uh, I've talked about in this video, you can actually uh, check them out over on GOG. You can use my affiliate links below and pick them up on sale right now. Uh, Morrowind is 60% off and Roller Coaster Tycoon is 75% off and you need a copy of these games in order to be able to play them. So if you use my links, you'll be able to help this show at no additional cost to you, and you'll get uh, a copy of these games that you can play in open source engines. That's pretty neat. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of the topics that I've covered so far, or uh, that I will cover in this video. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, and while you're down there, why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube you wanna see more videos just like this. And did you know that I release a new video every week? Get subscribed so you don't miss those. So Kyle from Bazite posted the July update for their project last night, uh, and it has debuted with some really exciting, massive changes here. Uh, from updates to the kernel to uh, the Fedora 32-bit controversy, they're touching on all of it today, and uh, maybe something really, really special that I talked about a few weeks ago. Let's get into it. So the first thing that they addressed in the project update is the whole drama that hit a few weeks ago about for, uh, Fedora proposing to drop 32-bit support from their distribution. Now, Fedora has valid reasons for wanting to drop 32-bit support, but when Kyle voiced his concerns uh, in the proposal thread about how it would negatively impact Bazite, um, they all worked together as a team toward a solution that benefited the entire community. As Kyle put it in his post, this is the beauty of Fedora's proposal system and why we did not make a lot of noise about this in the early days. What it did allow for is us and our team to make our needs clear and present use cases that otherwise may not have been accounted for. Now, I had the absolute joy of interviewing Kyle, which you can check out up here. Now, in the video that's available here on YouTube, uh, Kyle and I talked about the Fedora 32-bit drama, um, but if you want to watch us talk about um, Star Trek or some exclusive content, you can head over to Patreon or become a blog subscriber with the link here. Now, I think the biggest and most exciting thing about this release has to be bizarre. It's now the default Flathub store, not just for Bazite, but for all of Universal Blue, which is the upstream that Bazite relies on. 
This is a brand new store that eliminates many of the problems we've faced with other Linux app stores, mainly thanks to Bazaar being flat hub first and not dealing with traditional packages that aren't in use here anyway. Right away, you can find a more fluid update slash install slash uninstall process with a queue and global progress bar and a curated app experience that shows both applications we feel you should try out and new or rising apps within the greater Flathub ecosystem. The best part of Bazaar though, is that it provides donation links for individual flat pa packages. These donation links are the same links that you can find on Flathub, and this is a big deal as it allows you to directly support your favorite desktop Linux apps. And as Bazaar rolls out to other distributions, it's going to solve a major pain point for Linux app development. Now, as I pointed out in one of my recent posts on the blog, uh, Bazite Portal is back. This is a web portal that gives you an excellent means of configuring your Bazite install remotely. You can read my post about media apps on Bazite up here uh, for more information. All right, let's talk about contributions now because Universal Blue's Discord server now has 18,000 members, while their Bazite subreddit now has 15,000 members. They've also delivered 763 terabytes of ISO downloads in just the last 30 days. Bazite is a community-driven project that wouldn't be possible without their contributors, and it's great to see all of their success. Please check out their official post uh, with the link below for more information about this update. And if you don't have Bazite installed yet, you can follow my guide over on the blog uh, to get more information on that. If you've already got Bazite installed on your machine, Bazite should automatically update itself, or you can check out the documentation in the link below to uh, update manually. Now, I wanna thank all of the folks on the blog, my patrons and my YouTube members for making this show a reality. If you'd like to see your name listed over here, you can use the links below to make a monthly contribution. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.